When Bruce Lee was announced as a pre-order bonus fighter for EA Sports UFC, it generated a great deal of press, but ended up meaning very little. In fact, it was maybe the first indication that the game was being designed with casual gamers in mind instead of passionate fans of MMA. That ended up costing the publisher when sales proved disappointing, continuing a downward trend for UFC products that began with UFC 2009 Undisputed, selling a million copies in its first month and has most recently led to EA Sports UFC failing to reach even 300,000 in its first month. For the sequel now, EA turns to Mike Tyson, who is of course no stranger to sports video games. He was last featured in the publisher's Fight Night Champion released in 2011, but also has been seen in the WWE games up until the latest edition, likely only having been taken out because of a deal having been signed with EA. Now, why would Tyson make sense for EA Sports UFC 2? He has never competed in MMA. Well, for the same reason as Bruce Lee, his name and association with the game generates headlines. The news of Tyson being included in pre-orders made it not just to major gaming websites, but also those that cover sports in general, boxing, and UFC. He'll also be able to leverage media appearances in promoting the game. Tyson does make at least a little sense for the game, though, as a new knockout mode, which keeps the action on its feet, will be far better suited for him than traditional fights. It may be the closest thing we'll get to boxing on the current generation of consoles. As turned out to be the case with Bruce Lee, though, it's probably not anything that will have lasting impact. Few will buy a UFC game, which does not and probably never will have appeal to a wide audience, simply for one personality's inclusion. MMA games are too complex for most people, particularly those without a fair understanding of the sport to begin with. Based on the poll that I held on Twitter, 19% say the news could affect a purchase decision. That's actually a lower number than Lee generated in polling in the months ahead of the first UFC's release, and he ended up having no discernible influence on sales. Unlike major league-licensed sports games, the Maddens or NBA 2Ks or FIFAs, an MMA game can't rely on roster turnover to generate primary interest. That's part of why sales keep dropping. There's very little change to rosters, even for biannual releases. So in order to make a splash, a publisher such as EA feels the need to add unique personalities with stories that they can sell. The person who may make more of a difference, though, is an actual UFC fighter. Though he's yet to step into the octagon, Phil Brooks, a.k.a. CM Punk, was naturally going to be leveraged in marketing, and we've already seen that happening with his appearance in a trailer and screenshots. He's also generated press simply by making comments about his possible rating in the game. Through post-release support to the original EA UFC, and two legends being included alongside Tyson with pre-orders, there's reason to believe that EA Sports recognized their mistakes, and the sequel will be a far superior product. In the end, Mike Tyson will probably just be a footnote regarding the game, irrelevant to how it sold and whether it was received well by consumers.